Hey church, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Diana Mancias and I am the DC Nations and DC Neighbors Associate Director. Before we jump into worship, I would love to just read some scripture with you. So if you have a Bible near you, you can go ahead and open it to Psalm 119, 17 through 24. And it says, Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I am a sojourner on the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your rules at all times. You rebuke the insolent, accursed ones who wander from your commandments. Take away from me scorn and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies, even though princes sit plotting against me. Your servant will meditate on your statutes. Your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. Father, God, we thank you so much just for the opportunity to come and get to hear preaching on your word. Um, Father, I pray just that we would release and, and lay in front of you all that we're bringing today and that you would just give us rest and eyes to he- or ears to hear, Father, Um, just what you would have to say to us, God. I pray just uh, for Blake as he speaks, Lord, would you speak through him? Um, And Father, I just pray that we would meditate on your statutes, God, that we would love you deeply and we would seek to just know you more today, God. Um, Father, we praise you uh, for all that you will do and have done, God. We love you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, will you join us for worship? But 
like this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart his wounds have been my ransom, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have been my ransom. Hey guys, thanks so much once again for jumping in, joining us online for our online services this week as we continue to preach through the Bible and go through the one story of God as one church uh, for one year here in 2021. And so this week finds us in Joshua chapter 1. So if you've got your Bibles, your devices, turn there with me. Uh, one of the things that I did during the whole COVID shutdown where kind of everybody was in their home in the stay-at-home order is that I finally, finally watched uh, the musical Hamilton. Uh, I know I'm like four or five years behind. Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, but one of, the, one of my favorite characters in that musical, and if you haven't seen it, uh, shame on you. You should see it. It's pretty phenomenal. But one of my favorite characters in that musical is King George. Uh, he slobbers on himself. I just think he's got a great voice. I just thought he was really brilliant and really funny. But one of the fascinating things uh, that he sings or has like some kind of monologue is when he finds out that George Washington has moved on, that George Washington is retiring, that George Washington is going home. George Washington is no longer going to lead the United States. And, and he's got this interesting dialogue where he's, he says, well, who, who is it going to be? And then he finally goes, John Adams, I know him. And he's got this really great voice and it's hilarious. But it was really fascinating to think about that time who George Washington was. That George Washington was like a, a, an officer in the British Army, so he had experience. And then he came over to the American Army and fought for our, our army, the Revolutionary Army, and won the Revolutionary War. I mean, this guy was a giant. I mean, a giant. To the point that today, as school children, we, we learn all of these myths and legends about, you know, the cherry tree that he supposedly cut down, which that never happened. But anyways, we have made him this mythical creature that was just so phenomenal, whether it's Valley Forge and he's going, you know, across on the, on the ship and he's looking all brave and heroic. Uh, we've just made him this just unbelievable figure. And he was a giant at that time. And so it was like, who's going to take over for him? Uh, who, who's going to be the second president of the United States after George Washington has been so huge in the life and the history, the short history of the United States. And I, I, I honestly love John Adams, and I think he was a, a phenomenal dude, had a phenomenal marriage, uh, a man of incredible character, but it was a daunting task to essentially take over for someone who was a giant, and even more so than John Adams taking over for George Washington, we see in our story here in Joshua chapter 1, uh, Joshua taking over for a giant of the faith in Moses. Now think about all that Moses has meant to the nation of Israel, to God's people. 400 years they had been in slavery. 400 years. And Moses delivers them, not just by one uh, amazing act of God, but by like nine heroic acts of God. And then that's even before we get to the crossing of the Red Sea, where literally the sea stands up on its sides and creates like a highway for God's people to walk through. I mean, that's a phenomenal story in and of itself. 
And then he takes them into the desert and you've got manna falling from heaven and quail falling from heaven. I mean, just miracle after miracle after miracle. And then you have Mount Sinai where he ascends Mount Sinai and and appears to talk to God almost face to face uh, and to get the Ten Commandments. And then he comes down from, and he has like these stone tablets, like you and I've got our Bible that we bought at, at Lifeway or Mardell or online. He had stone tablets carved from God. I mean, this guy was a giant of the faith, a giant of a man. Uh, he spoke to God face to face. God backed his play in some unbelievable ways. I mean, just over and over. Matter of fact, uh, Deuteronomy 34, 10 through 12 kind of shapes this. And it says this, And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, who the Lord knew face to face. None was like him for all the signs and wonders that the Lord had sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, and for all the mighty power and great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. I mean, this guy was a giant of the faith, just a giant of a man, of a leader. And here in Joshua 1, God says, hey, Joshua, it's your turn. Uh, I'm passing the baton on to you. It's your turn to lead my people. Can you even imagine Maybe you've been the successor at your work for somebody who's served long and served faithfully, and you're like, you took that baton, you're like, okay, I've got some big shoes to fill, but can you imagine Joshua in this moment? So here we go, Joshua chapter 1. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Like, heck of a eulogy. You know, he didn't, he didn't go into all this discourse and all this stuff. He's like, hey, dude, uh, Moses is dead. You're up. Let's go. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, and into the land that I'm giving to them, to the people of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and from this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, All the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. So there's this call to go, hey, I'm I'm with you. Uh, Just like I've been with Moses, I'm going to be with you. But here's the deal. Moses did all of these great things, took us out of Egypt, took us out of slavery, took us in the wilderness. But the one thing Moses didn't do was he didn't take the people over the river, over the Jordan, and to take the land, to take the promised land. And Joshua, that's what you're going to do. I know this giant of the faith, Moses, wasn't able to do this, uh, didn't get this done, but you, you're going to do this. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the pressure on Joshua? Like, how am I going to do this? How is this going to happen? And so what the Lord does in the next couple verses is he says, he says this phrase and he says it three times. He says, be strong, be courageous, be strong, be courageous. He's, he's saying, I'm trying to encourage you to be strong, to have courage as you fulfill God's command, as you fill God's plan. And you see here that there's a couple ways that he does that, how we have the courage. And I want you to see this because this is important for you and I. Check it out. Verse six. He says, be strong and courageous for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Um, one, he, he gives him the, the, the plan. He says, hey, here is my purpose. And here's what I love about God is that God could have done this on his own, Right? I mean, God doesn't need us, but he invites us in. So when he commands us, he's like, not uh, not like this evil taskmaster like Pharaoh. Hey, let me whip your backs to make you go and do this, to have this done for me. No, no, he's inviting us into his purpose and his plan. 
You know, it's interesting when, when we uh, invite our kids to do projects. I don't know if you've ever done this, but you, you get something at the house and you're like, all right, we got to put this together. And you open up the box and they see that they're, they're excited because it's one of their toys or something. And, and they pull it out and they see it's all broken up and there's a million different pieces and like a 50 page thing of instructions and all this stuff. And the kids are like, I'm out, right? <laughs> and they dip out. But you're like, no, 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 come on, come on, help me out, help me out. Listen, we don't, we don't ask them for help because we we actually need their help. I mean, if we're real honest, kids probably do more harm than they do good. They, they, they hurt more than they help. But what we want to do is we want to invite them in because we love them. We love spending time with them. Uh, it's a fun project for us to do together. And in the same way, this is God. He doesn't, he doesn't need your advice. He knows everything. He doesn't need your money. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He doesn't need us. Uh, he is all-powerful. But at the same time, he invites us in. So his commands are invitations to come and and, and be with him, not for our help, but for us to have a front row seat at the glory show as he flexes his muscles, as he shows off how awesome he truly is. You see, the point is God always accomplishes his purposes. We see this really clearly in Ephesians 1. He always accomplishes his purposes purposes. He's just inviting inviting us in. How beautiful is that? And that's what he's doing with Joshua. He's going, listen, I'm going to get this done. We're going to get the land. I've already promised it. Matter of fact, I've even named the land the promised land because I'm going to get this done. And so I'm just inviting you in to have a front row seat to what I'm going to accomplish. What a beautiful thing. And that is a great reminder for us that when God invites us in, man, it is as good as done. He will accomplish his purposes. And then verse 7, check it out. He says it again. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all that the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Once again, for the second time, he gives us this call to be courageous. So how are we courageous? What does God tie our courage, our strength to? He ties it to his word. And he gives two things. He says, be, be careful, careful with God's word, not to go to the right or the left. Uh, this past year, my son, my oldest son, Corbin, turned 16. And so we've been teaching him to drive. So pray for us. Put us on your prayer list. But it's fascinating to watch him uh, when he drives. I mean, he's 10 and 2 on that steering wheel. He's like focused. He's locked in, right? Because he doesn't want to veer off to the left or veer off to the right into another lane or whatever. He is locked in. And in the same way, that's what J- uh, God is calling Joshua to do. This is how you have courage. This is how you have strength. You are locked in. You're careful to do all the commandments of God. And in the same way, he goes, do not let this word depart from your mouth. No, why your mouth? That's kind of strange. Now, why not not your mind or your heart? Well, because Jesus would say this. He would kind of connect the dots for us in the New Testament in Matthew. And he says, hey, out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth will speak. And so whatever it is that you like, I love this. Well, you're really about that thing because it's in your heart and so it comes out. I've got friends that, man, we talk about Aggie football all the time. Every time we see each other, every time we talk, every time we text, we're talking about Aggie. Why? Because we love it. In, in the same way, my, my son, Crew, loves the game of soccer. And so he, if he's not practicing soccer, playing soccer, he's talking about soccer. He's wearing soccer jerseys, soccer kits. He's playing FIFA video games. He's watching videos. He's watching EPL uh, matches. He loves it. And so he talks about it all the time. It's just coming out. And then the same way, he's going, don't let it depart from your mouth. Don't let it depart from your mouth because the overflow of the heart, the mouth will speak. You see, if it's in our heart and it's on our brains, it will be on our tongue as well. 
Listen, why is this important for us to be strong and courageous? Why is the word of God? Because God's promises in his word are the way for us to live prosperous lives. God's word, God's promises in his word are the way for us to live prosperous lives. Listen, do we believe that? Do we believe that if we are careful to obey God's word, careful not to veer to the right or to the left or get off course or try following the ways of the world or following this or that or whatever, we just stick to God's word, God's truth, then we'll, we'll live a prosperous life. Do we believe that if we're dwelling in the word, as Colossians says, uh, that, that we're setting it in our heart, in our mind, in our mouth, that we'll be prosperous? Do we really believe God's promises? Because God would say over and over in his word, this is life. This is life. Or have we redefined success, redefined prosperity into something else, something worldly? You see, I'm not talking about prosperity theology. I'm talking about a biblical theology that says, hey, what prosperity is, what success is, is obeying God's word. That's success. That success in God's eyes is it success in your eyes. That's a great word for us. Great word for us. And then the final third thing that he says, and we see it once again, be strong and courageous. Verse nine, he says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Yes, you've commanded us twice. Now it's the third time. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is going with you wherever you are going. Now, how can we be frightened? How can we not be frightened? How can we not be dismayed? I think it goes back to just us going, hey, we want to go with somebody. Uh, there's times where I ask my kids, hey, go outside. It's night. The, the sun's gone down. It's dark. I'm like, will you go outside into the garage, which is across from our house? And they're like, well, will you go with me? Will, will, will you go with me? There's something that we like safety in numbers. I think it's why uh, so many girls are like, hey, I don't go to the bathroom alone, so can all my friends go to the bathroom? I, I don't know what's going on in there, but <laughs> they, they, there's safety in numbers. We like having the presence of other people. And in the same way, there's power in in God's presence. Like it's great to have our friends and our family and people come with us to gather with us and go with us. But man, if we've got the living God with us and we see this, this promise in God, of God all through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. God is with us. And if we ever begin to doubt that, all we have to do is look back at the gospel that God in all of his grace, in all of his mercy, in all of his sovereignty, sent his one and only son down to earth to dwell with us, to tabernacle with us, to live amongst us, to put on flesh, and to go to the cross and die in our place. And then when he rose from the dead and he went to heaven, what did he do? Did he leave us again? No, he sent us his Holy Spirit, not to just be on earth with us, but to be in us. And so now, if you're a brother or sister in the faith, and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit living inside you. He will never leave us nor forsake us. You see, God's presence means power. It's how we can move forward in faith and not live in fear when we have these daunting tasks before us, when God calls us to move forward in faith. Let me ask you, where in your life is God calling you to be strong and courageous? Where is God calling you to move forward in faith? Where is God calling you to obey Him? Where is God calling you to join Him in the mission of God? For some of you, it looks like a financial step. You go, hey, we're going to get our finances uh, in shape this next year so that we can be generous, so that we can give generously to the church and to missions and, and to uh, nonprofit organizations. So that we want to be a generous people like God is generous with Jesus. And so we want to get our finances in, sh in shape. 
Maybe for some of you, you're like, listen, I need to change jobs and I've been holding on to the security of this job for so long, but God's calling me to take a step of faith and move forward to be strong and courageous and trust Him. Maybe for some of you, it's to get out of that unhealthy, toxic relationship that you've been in that's not good for your faith, that's not good for your walk with Jesus, it's not good for you, and so you just need to take a step of faith. Maybe for some of you, it's that you actually share the gospel. You know the gospel. You read the gospel. You talk about the gospel with Christians. You just don't talk about it with lost people. You don't talk about it with your neighbors. You don't talk about it with with the people that live around you, that work with you. Maybe that's where it is. Maybe your step of faith is that you will finally going to offer forgiveness for somebody. You're finally going to reach out to somebody and just go, hey, I'm sorry about that. I apologize for that. Maybe it's that you'll finally go see that counselor for that issue that's been just holding you back and dragging you down. Or maybe... It's that you finally surrender your life to Christ Jesus and you go, listen, I, I, I've been checking you out. I've been, I've been listening to your, the sermons. I've been reading your word. I've been trying to pray and, 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 and get all these questions answered and figure all these things out. But I finally just need to trust you and go, uh, I'm going to be strong and courageous. And, and what that means is I humble myself before God and say, yes, I'll follow you. Whatever that looks like for you, The call of God is the same for Joshua as it is for you, that you would be strong and courageous, that you would move forward in faith and find that God is more than enough. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the story of Joshua because we get to see not just his faithfulness, we get to see your faithfulness, that you are more than enough, that you are big, that you are strong, that you are mighty, and because you are strong and you are mighty and you live within us, we can be strong, we can be courageous, we can take a step forward in faith and and do unthinkable things, unimaginable things, because we serve a God who is all-powerful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the truth of that word. Help your people today to process this, to deal with this, and to be strong and courageous as you are a good and loving God. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Declaration Church, my name is Hunter Warner. I am the Youth and College Director here. Uh, Just before you leave, we have a couple announcements for you. Our first announcement at Declaration Church is that we are going to be having a covenant membership class. If you are interested, go and sign up online. Uh, The class is going to be on April 18th. This is a way for you to partner deeper with us at Declaration and to learn more about how you can do that uh, through the class. So go sign up online uh, for April 18th. Our second announcement is that we will be having Easter at the Lake Walk on April 4th uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, If you are interested in coming, we would love for you to come. This is going to be a time where we are trying to be socially distant and outdoors so that we can have as many of our families coming. Also, there will be an online service at 10 a.m. as well. Our next announcement is that we have Celebration Sunday coming up on April 25th. If you are wanting to come and be baptized and tell your story to our church, please go online. Uh, and sign up so that we can rejoice in your salvation and in your baptism with your new life in Jesus. Our last announcement is that we are having 3D groups. These groups are for our college students. The goal of them is to develop students who declare and demonstrate the gospel in Bryan College Station and beyond. If you want to get involved in this time in these groups, will you go online to our college page, click on the 3D groups, and then look and sign up for a time that works for you. We are excited about this new and revamped ministry. Thank you for worshiping with us. Uh, Will you please join us in the doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. 